Well, to find out what's going on, we'll put detectors at the switch. We'll put some detectors at the left switch so that we can see what's going on. And we'll put detectors at the right switch and we see what's going on. Whenever a particle goes through these detectors, whenever a particle goes through the switch, we'll count it. What will happen is, oop, got a little flash. And we're going to count that. And we're not going to actually put a, a particle over there, but we'll represent a particle as, you know, one hit. We got one. Something went through. Got one, Captain. Saw the flash. And on the other side, if we get a flash, uh, we'll count one on the other side. So the particle is going to go through. But as they go through, we're going to count them. We can detect them. And these are good detectors. So something funny is going on, and a half of a proton is going through one side, and a half of a proton is going through the other side, or something like that, we'll know. Because these detectors can detect half a particle, or a quarter, or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so, uh, that, this way we'll know whether uh, what is going on at the slit. And let's think about what the logical possibilities are. What could be going on at the slit? If you go through one slit, if you go through the other slit, it could go through both slits, I don't know how, or to round out our logical possibility, it could go through no slit. So, here we go, whoop, there we go, and whoop, there we go. Okay, we didn't get half one, okay, we got a full one there, and whoop, there we go, got a full one there, one side went off, one side went off, okay, what's going on, one side went off, one side went off, so we're not getting any result where half of a particle goes through, every time we send a particle down, we're getting a flash at one slit or the other. Start off with 12 particles, and it turns out, again, after a statistical average, we end up with uh, six going through one slot, six going through the other slot, in a fairly random distribution. We can't predict where the next one's going to go. Uh, and all we've got one whole particle going through one slot or the other. We never got half a particle going through each or, or something going through both slots at the same time. And we never got nothing. So we can rule out the magic theory. Um, so one particle, it, it turns out they're going through one slit or the other. Well, how do we get our wave distribution, our interference pattern? Oh. Hmm? <laughs> uh, now we get a strange result. Uh, the distribution changed. Does that look like a wave interference pattern? No. And we'd be really happy if that had been the result all along because that looks like a pile of clumps clumping up where they've gone through the slits and they pile up on the back. That's what we were expecting in the first place. Uh, now we're getting them. How come? Did we do something? What could be happening? It changed, somehow it changed that opening. The detectors are doing something to change these things. Well, let's, uh, let's test that. Because that's not an interference pattern. That is a clumping pattern. So we're going to turn the detectors off. Turn them off. Uh, we leave, leave them there. So, you know, if it was making the opening wider or, or narrower or anything, uh, it'll still be doing that. But we're going to turn them off. And we send through, and uh, after the end of the day, okay, huh. Well, the only thing we meant to do, the only thing we thought we were doing, is turning off. But now our result has changed back to something that looks so wavy. You never see a wave, but... That is, if you don't, if you don't call that definite evidence of a wave, uh, we don't know what it is. And now they're, so now we got something wavy going on again. Uh, all we did was turn them off. Well, maybe having them on, uh, and having those flashes appear is what's changing the particles as they go through. So what we're going to have to look at is, um, Leave the detectors on. So it's going to flash every time a particle goes through, if that's what's happening. It's going to flash, but we're not going to collect the information. We're going to disconnect the monitor. So whatever those detectors are doing, whatever they, they're doing, we don't know what they're doing. Whatever they're doing, they're going to do it. 
And now the only thing we're going to do is we're just not going to look at the results. We're not going to count them at the slip. So we won't actually know whether anything uh, has gone through. So here we have, they're going to go through, the detectives are going to do whatever they do, uh, but we're not going to count. So I'm just going to leave these two things on, so they're not going to flash. Uh, but we know that they're doing whatever they do. And here we go. Uh, one after the other, they keep going. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're going through, they're going through. And eventually, uh, this is what we get. If we count them one at a time at the double slit as they go by, we end up with one hit at a time at the back wall, building up to a statistical clumping pattern, as though these were just ordinary particles. If we do not count them at the slit, but we do everything else the same, then we get one hit at a time at the back wall, and it builds up to a statistical, huh, interference pattern, as though some kind of wave were involved. Counting the results was uh, counting the particles at the double slit, learning which slit they went through, uh, ends up in the interference pattern, excuse me, the clumping pattern, as though they were just ordinary particles. The same setup, but we just don't count them at the slit, results in a completely different distribution of particles. What is the difference? Well, after a considerable amount of head scratching, it was basically determined that if you count the particles at the double slit, we know which slit they went through. If we don't count the particles at the double slit, we don't know which slit they went through. So, we know, we don't know. What's the difference? The difference is whether we know which slit the particle went through. The difference is whether we know. Choosing to make a count changes the experimental result on our laboratory table. Well, what's up with that? 